This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Crawley versus Pompeii. You all have been together for six years. You have two children together, but there is a cloud over this relationship right now. Uh, Ms. Crawley, you've opened this case today. Tell us why. Me and him have been together six years. We have two kids, and he's done nothing but betray me. Um, we wanted to be together so bad that we used to sleep in cars together just to be together, because everybody, you know, would try and pull us apart, wouldn't take us in, so we used to sleep in cars together. But then um, I thought that he would never hurt me. Every, after everything that we've been through, I thought we would be okay. But now I find out that he's cheating. He has cheated, and if I find out he's cheating today, it's the end of it. So no amount of history and thing you've been through can get over this. No. All right. Mr. Pompey, what have you got to say in the face of these allegations? I mean, it's all a lie. Her family don't like me, you know, and... It's all a lie? Yeah. So is she making all this up? Is it in her head? Because she thinks you're cheating. No, I'm not cheating. She just always accused me. Do you like want I... this relationship to work? Yes, I do. What is it about her that you love? I mean, the chemistry and, you know, we had a lot of fun, you know. She's just a fun person to be yeah. around? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, Ms. Crawley, you are here and you're trying to make sure the man that you love doesn't break your heart again. Yes. How did he break your heart the first time? Okay. So, I had stayed the night at my mother's house. So, I hadn't talked to him all that day. Okay. So, you know, I had to turn in a private investigator. I got on his social media. A woman messages his profile and says, hey, so I just automatically click in. I'm acting like I'm him, just trying to see who she is. You know, it might just be somebody just hitting him up, you know. But come to find out, this is somebody that he's know and has been seeing. So, I continue to act like I am him, and she says, when can I see you again? So, automatically, I snap out of him and I snap back into this is his girlfriend. So she gets to telling me everything, gets to spilling the tea on what they've been doing. He's been staying the night over there, planning on leaving me to be with her. How did you get his phone? No, I didn't get his phone. I just got on his um, Facebook. And, and in the midst of this, this lady messages him. Yes. And so you respond as him. Yes. So you basically catfished her. Yes. And so then she. What did you like, say? I just played like him. I was like, hey, you know, what's up? And she, she, you know, she's going in, oh, nothing, just chilling, you know? So I'm like, oh, you know, when was the last time we seen each other? She's like, oh, stop playing. I just seen you last night. Oh, so like, okay. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So I keep going. Then she's... So said, that's how you found out he was yes, cheating? Yes, yes. Uh, so what else did you find out? Telling her he's moving with her. He's leaving... He's leaving you to go to her. Yeah, she planning on helping him pay child support. They got it all mapped out. When I say mapped out, I mean down to the T. And you're in this conversation with her and she's just telling you everything. Everything. Oh, yeah. I guess, you know, they had a plan. If I, if I found out about her, she wouldn't say nothing. Hmm. She well, got she... the spilling. So, so you, you found out about the plan Details. that was in place in case you found out about her. Yes. While oh, you were finding goodness. out about her. Yeah. <laughs> wow. About it, show him proof he still denied it. It wasn't okay. until I called her on three way and she's telling him, Oh, so you didn't say this, you didn't say that, nothing to say. Mr. Pompey, who is this woman? Oh, uh, her name is Drika. Drika, what? Just somebody that, like a friend, that's all. Like a friend? Like a friend? Oh, like a bad God. friend? What's, what's Drika's <laughs> back? No, 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 is she like a bad friend? No, nah, it's just an old friend, that's all. Well, did you get in out of bed with her? Yes? No, no. Did you sleep with this young lady? Yes, I did. Oh. I did. Uh, but that was How long ago did this happen, Miss Miss Crawley? Um, probably about two years ago. Did he admit to you that he had slept with this young lady? Yes. He made me literally go through everything just to find out the truth. So he you finally broke a brother down. Yes. And he confessed. Every time. And this was about two years ago. Yes. All right. Okay, because, I mean, clearly he's not much of a talker. No, yeah, that's kind so. of... That's what I understand, Mr. Cutler. <laughs> well, she had to pull it out of him, All I'm right. sure. So he admits that he's sleeping with her. Yes. So your concern is it wasn't just something that happened two years ago. You're concerned that it's still going on now. Yes. Well, Mr. Cutler, there's her side, there's his side, and there's Miss Green's side, and Miss Green is here. <laughs> Mr. Green? Step right to the left there. Mr. Bond. I told you. 
to you I wasn't talking to him. Miss Green, would you please state your full name for the record? Theodrica Green. Miss Green, did you have a relationship with Mr. Pompey? Yes, until uh, we both got busted. So how did, how did this relationship start? Start on Facebook. He inboxed me with the little funny eyes. Was like, he liked my feel good. And I was like, what you mean? You haven't even seen me. Then he asked for a picture and he was like, I look better than his baby mama. Oh. And I was like, who is your baby mama? And he sent me a picture of her and I was like, oh, she cute. Whatever like that. And he started telling me her problems about how he trying to get away from her and how he wanted to be with me. But I have a girlfriend. So I would tell him that, like, he can't move in with me, but as far as missing around, yes. Did he tell you that he was still with Miss Crawley? He, he was like, that's his baby mama. He wasn't like, oh, we together. He didn't tell me the whole detail about, oh, we live together and all of that. He said, we have kids together. But and that he, was it? Yeah. My friend inboxed her to let her know that I'm missing with her man. Oh. And, and how long did this sexual relationship last? November 6th of 17. All it's right. 19 now. So it lasted more than a year. Yeah. And from what I knew, it was only supposed to be a few weeks. Well, he lied. Oh. So you're just finding out today in this courtroom that they had a relationship for over a year. Yes, longer than what I thought, yes. And you were thinking it was only a few weeks. Yes, and I was actually friends with her. After they had got done, you know, messing around or whatever, me and her start talking, you know, I start confiding in her, telling her our problems, because, you know, he's playing both of us. So, you know, we start talking, becoming friends. I thought everything was cool. But she still cool. accused me now. So you're saying nothing's going on now? Oh, no, not now. And are you agreeing? It ain't me, so. Yeah. But you, Miss Crawley, are not buying this. I still have just my suspicions, you Let know. Let me tell you something, we go but, out to eat, I pick up my phone, text, he pick up his phone, she, oh, let me see the phone. Thinking I'm texting him while we at the table. We became closer because he played both of us, so we was like, you know what, we finna be friends, boss up on him, show him he not, you know, knocking no woman down. Like, you know, we still well, really, stand strong. you know, you like girls, I like girls. Yeah. Believe him here. Exactly. But I didn't Just know. Like that. But now you're concerned that they're still having sex. Yes. Hey! What did you just say? She like girls, I like girls. We could really just leave him here. Because <laughs> <After four>, so. <laughs> he's playing both songs. <laughs> Y'all don't even need him. Don't. <laughs> don't. So he's e extra. Extra. Is this a proposition? <laughs> we not a date court. We are. <laughs> So, I got a clear picture. The question is, in your mind, if I'm hearing you correctly, mm -hmm. is, is he still with her? Yeah, He's that's saying all I want to know. But that's what you want to know. All right. Well, to get to the bottom of this, this court has done a full investigation. At this time, we will call licensed polygraph examiner Tommy Platt to determine, is he cheating? Ron, please bring Mr. Yes, Platt let's in. Get some yes, baby. Tommy Platt. Come on, that's all we need. Let's get into these results. Good day, Mr. Platt. Would you please state for the record your credentials? I have over 30 years experience in the United States military and as a police officer. I've been a licensed polygraph examiner for 11 years and conducted nearly 3,000 examinations. And so you uh, did the polygraph for Mr. Uh, Pompey, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And you asked him, are you currently having a sexual relationship with Ms. Green? What was Mr. Pompey's response? He stated no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful. Thank you, Mr. Play, but Ms. Crawley, I just saw you roll your eyes. You were like, whatever. Okay, because she's clear, but what about the other women? Oh, okay, well, talk, talk to me about the other women. You got some concerns about other women? Oh, it ain't just her. Mean. He been oh. cheating since we've been together. And oh. he know that, she know that, the whole family know that, so. Okay, hold up, Miss Green. You, <laughs> Miss Green, do you want to go over there with her? Because she's I the really one do. who's, she's you, the one who's accusing really him. Do. So, oh. do you want to go over there and help her accuse him? Okay, come on around behind him and stand with the girl. Oh. We got some, we got some black girl magic going on right here. <laughs> All right. Mr. Pompey, they, they teaming up on you. <laughs> I think they also want to really team up, but I, you know, that's another conversation. <laughs> okay. So you're saying there are other women. Tell me about those other women you're concerned with, Miss Crawley. 
He always has got caught meeting women online, okay. which is what turned me to a private investigator. Every time I'm asleep, I wake up, he forgets to log out, not that smart. He forgets to delete history, and I see POF, Facebook, Messenger, I see messages from other women, and once he, he's gotten caught so much on his own profile that he's making fake pages to talk to these women. How yes. many fake pages does he have? Uh, he got a POF, an Instagram, and a Facebook. And the thing is, he's gotten so good at it that they are not him, but they look just like him. Oh. Really? Yes. So how did you find these fake profiles? He does not log out of anything. You know, he don't delete no history. He'll fall asleep on my phone, on my phone, on his chest. He forget the phone is there. And whenever I get up, you know, I'm getting on my phone just to see what's, you know, notifications. And I see POF is open. So I he's using Instagram. your phone to, to contact yes, other my women? my phone, yes. You know what, Kyla? This, between what she's saying and what I'm looking at, it's crazy. Yes, this, oh, it, it's a circus. I mean, he's using her phone to contact other women online. And he's leaving the apps open so she can find him. I don't know. I mean, but it's consistent with her standing down there with his mistress. You can't get past that far, <laughs> can you? I'm like, okay. Of course he would leave her phone open where he's contacting other women. Of it just he makes is. sense. It just goes together. Well, she brought Mr. Pompey. My phones already. Whatever. Mr. Pompey, are, are you meeting and chatting with other women online? Sometimes. 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 That means yes. That means yes. yes. A lot of times. Yeah. Man, that's player 101. You don't use your girlfriend's phone to do it if you're gonna be that. Who are these other women that you're talking to online? Um, it was a girl that I met recently named Diamond. Well, I call her Diamond, but that's not a real name. Are you sleeping with her? No, I haven't met her. Well, we have heard about this woman, Diamond. Mm hmm Well, Diamond is here. <gasps> Oh, my gosh. How are you? Good day. How are you? Good. How are you? Would you state your name, please, for the court record? Amanda Copeland. And, Ms. Copeland, do you have a nickname that you go by? Mm hmm I mean, he calls me Diamond. He calls you Diamond? Yeah. Well, you know what they say, <laughs> Mr. Cutler? Shine bright like a diamond. Here it yeah. is. Not at all. And he gave you that nickname? Mm-hmm. How did you two meet? Uh, I believe we have a bunch of mutual friends, so I guess he found me on people you may know. So he messaged me and said that I looked really good to him, and he liked to get to know me. While you all were communicating, did he ever tell you about his relationship with Miss Crawley? Yeah, he told me they were, you know, together. It was kind of rocky, but he's always wanted an open relationship, so he asked if I was willing to be in one, and I said, of course, because I don't really want anything too serious right now. And when he said he wanted to be in an open relationship, you took that to mean what it sounds like. Right. You know, where... You do. You have your relationship, and I have mine on the other side. We have each other still. Did you say you wanted an open relationship? Mm. <laughs> that ain't one of the oh, yeah. ones you gotta Come think on. about, Yeah, man. I mean, I told her that, yeah, at the time, yeah. And do... I'm asking you, do you want one? Yes. You do? Yes. And you shared that with her? Ms. Yeah. Diamond, have you shared that with Ms. Crawley? No. Have you shared that with Ms. Green? No. no. What kind of relationship do you want with uh, the defendant, Mr. Pompey? He can be happy and how... I would never take a man away from his kids and family, but, I mean, I want my own thing, too, on the side, as with him involved in it. So you be willing to be with him and Ms. Crawley? Sure. Miss Crawley? Well, sorry, you can't have her because she going to be mine after today. <laughs> I mean, I can, just take, I can just take him away well, and you take can, him with me. We together, you I can mean, take we him can be together. Can do whatever. It's, okay. it's whatever, because I can Green, be with what him. what did you just say? She could take him, and I'm going to take her. <laughs> and that's your solution to resolving all this? Miss yeah. Crawley, are you down for this? I don't like sharing. Sharing is not caring in my situation. <laughs> so, I and you, are you willing to, you know, you and Miss Green? Oh, yeah, we can leave him behind. I'm already leaving him alone after today. This is too much for me. <laughs> no. I hope that you have... Whatever you got going on, I hope it works out. That's all I can say. Oh, and make sure you get two or three jobs because that child support finna hit. <laughs> Mr. Pompey, what do you have to say for yourself? All of this has come out. 
I'm thinking about just doing my own thing. You been doing your own thing, boy? Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think doing your own thing is what's got you in the situation you're in now. It, it's your head is spinning. I can see it spinning. <laughs> I just gotta ask these ladies something. Ladies, please, please, what is it about him that's got y'all spinning? <laughs> I don't, I don't get it. He has not strung a full sentence together. I don't know how he got you. you. Sneaky. Well, apparently he didn't have to chase women. They chasing him. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to understand. You all can do better. Yeah. Yes. And I expect you to do better. You all have been together for four years. You have previously appeared in this courtroom. Yes. And Ms. Williams, since returning home, you have become concerned about Mr. Sims' behavior. Is that right? Yes, sir. Tell us why. All right, Mr. Judge Cutler. So, I'm bringing Ben back because I fell the last time that we were here previously on the physical contact question that was asked of me. Okay. I'm... So, once we got back home, you know, Ben started... I saw a lot of uh, his demeanor changing, you know, and I became very suspicious. So, when I say that I became suspicious, these are the things that I noticed happening. Ben works 30 minutes away from the home. He started coming home an hour and a half late, two hours late sometimes, being on the phone, you know, but in private, you know, um... Just things of that nature, you know. So I was like, well, let me try to get my relationship, you know, find out what's going on. Uh, hold on. Did you all go back home and immediately things were amiss? Or did you think, okay, we've had this moment, we're moving forward, he's forgiven me, hopefully. D was there any, like, reprieve between being here in this courtroom and then the warning signs that you just talked about. So, when we were here, things seemed to be okay. Okay. Two weeks later and ongoing is when it started going downhill. So, you for a moment thought things... Okay, we're gonna get over this. Everything... Things are right. right. Okay. Absolutely. And then Absolutely. that's when you start noticing his behavior. Yes. Now I'm at the point when he come in the door, drop your pants. Drop your draw. Oh! Lift it up. Let me check it out. You have not become a sniffer. I have. Oh. Yes, I have. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Miss yeah. Williams. Let me tell you. So I want to clear. Yes. For the record. Uh huh. That you were here before. Yes, ma'am. Because Mr. Sims was accusing you of cheating. Yes, ma'am. And you failed the test physical. of physical contact That's with someone it. else. Yes. That was it. That was it. But you are left together with plans of happily ever after. Yes, ma'am. And you are here today now accusing him of cheating. Yes, ma'am. I'm innocent, Your Honor. See, it's not your okay. turn yet, sir. All right. <laughs> Mrs. Sims, you're over there shaking. Your Honor, this is... This case is ludicrous. I gotta say that. It's ludicrous. This is all about her and her insecurities about what happened last time. I accepted what happened last time. No, you didn't. Well, she says your demeanor changed. That when you got home, all of a sudden, you started taking a longer route to work. It's not that, Your Honor. It's not, I'm not taking a longer commute to work. It's just sometimes I may hang out with the fellas at the work. They used to ask me to go out, and I'd be like, well, nah, you know, I'm gonna go home and just kick back with my lady, and that's that. But it's just now, you know... I want to be more interactive with my friends. I'm starting to hang out more. That's about it. There's nothing more to, to... No more to than that. What about the private calls? Like she said, now you I... go and take these private phone calls. Why are you doing that now? I don't have... Bro, that's her own insecurities again. There's You're... no private phone calls involved in this. I, if she's on... Like, a lot of times she's watching television and she's yelling at me, be quiet, I'm watching Love and Hip Hop or something or doing this or doing that. And so I'm, I'm gonna go in the next room and start talking to whoever because she really don't want to pay me any attention at that moment. You know, I don't... But you're saying you're not talking to other women when you're in no, the other sir. room. No, sir. I'm a little petty. I get it. I'm part of the petty gang. Yeah, I do things <laughs> to get on underneath her skin. You passed the petty gang. Uh, I... So what do you do to get underneath her skin as it relates to, you know, her allegations against you of cheating? I, I might take a pop shot at her, too. Be like, you know, like, if it's... Like, say, we could be sitting there watching you guys on TV. I was like, and then somebody get caught on something, I'm like, hey, babe, you, you know, I made throw a little slide in there. You got caught, remember? You know, she... Oh! So, so, the she very, so the very thing we tell people, look, don't keep bringing up the past. You got to move don't forward past this. Don't keep yourself out of a good relationship. Your You're honor. using Let that know. to take shots at her. <laughs> yes. Don't cheat yourself yes. out of a good relationship yes. now.
Yeah. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. So you're in the petty gang. Yes, ma'am. And you're kind of taking pot shots. You've owned that. But are you Own. petty enough to cheat? I'm not petty enough to cheat. Yes, you are. So he's saying he's part of the petty gang, but he's saying he's not cheating. What makes you think that he is cheating? I have a few instances. Okay. Okay. Doing laundry one day. Oh. Putting clothes away. I see these size 13 purple underwear. I wear size 8, honey. I ain't that big. Where these thirteens come from? Ben says, "Oh, I don't know." What you mean? How did you get in our laundry, Ben? Miss Williams, yeah. when you found these patterns, what did you do? What you mean? I went off. <laughs> All right. I'm not. We're not gonna talk about it. There's nothing I'm talking about. I've been doing your laundry for five years. And There's you... no other panties in there but these size eight. And you Where confront... these thirteens come from? And you confront him about it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And Mr. Mr. Sims. Did she confront you about these panties? It was all Greek to me. Did she confront you about these panties? She confronted me. I mean, I'm sitting there watching the TV and bam! (laughs) Here they come. And what did you tell her? It wasn't me. (laughs) Who else could it have been if it wasn't you? Your Honor, I don't know who it was, but it wasn't Ben. Were you being petty? Was this an instance where you (laughs) grabbed some woman's panties just to get her riled up? (laughs) But no, I'm petty, but not that petty. Not that petty. <laughs> Never. Not that petty. Okay, so these were underwear that were not like yours. Nothing. Nothing like no, yours. Ma'am. They were with his life. Your Honor. Ma'am. Now, did he, were they in a hamper or something like yeah, that? Yeah, because we have the dirty clothes hamper. So I go and I separate the clothes to have them washed, you know, and here these 13s are. Same color as the shirt, actually. So, Ms. Williams, now we know what you've seen. Have you found anything that makes you think he's cheating? Absolutely. Well, we were uh, cleaning out his car one day. Oh, boy. And uh, I see him, you know, so we're talking, you know, getting along, whatever, and I see him reach down real quick to try and pick the condom up. I said, oh, no, 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 no. What is that? Oh, Jeanette, here you go, because he calls me Jeanette. Oh, Jeanette, here you go with this. Let me see this condom. Where this condom come from? So I put him out. He tells me that it was this this man here, my brother, Mr. Williams. His condom. So you all are cleaning out his car. His, his car. Okay. And the condom falls. But he trying to hurry up and scramble some paper over the stuff to cover it up. So you couldn't see it. So I couldn't see it. But I got four eyes. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm see this real quick. Mr. Williams. Mr. Did, Sims. did the condom fall out? Your Honor, yes, it did fall out. Okay. Where did it fall out from? It was in between the seat <laughs> and the, you know, yeah. between, I was cleaning in yeah. between the seat, you know, where people sit in your seat right there. I, when I seen it, I was like, oh, God. So you tried <laughs> to get it. I'm saying, oh, God, I just, this not, nah, this, I just, I got the, if it wasn't for bad luck, I have no luck at all, Your Honor. So oh. I said, okay. <laughs> so I, I, I handed it to, well, where did this come from? Mm-hmm. And what did you tell her? I said, it was my brush. It was his. <laughs> so he didn't drop any keys. He didn't drop any change. He didn't drop any dollars. He didn't drop his wallet. The only thing he dropped... Is a magnum. ...was a condom. <laughs> a magnum. Your Honor, it may my sound crazy, you. but it's the truth. You right. You brought a witness with you. Yes, sir. All right, sir, would you stand up and step to the podium, please? <clears throat> and would you state your name, please, for the record? Alfred Williams. And Mr. Williams, what is your relationship to Miss Williams and Mr. Sims? Miss Williams is my sister and it's my brother-in-law, Benjamin. So the plaintiff, Miss Miss Williams, is your sister? His yes, sister. sir. Okay. And you... Look at this. And you testifying for Mr. Sims? Did you see this? I'm here to tell the truth, to get the truth out. What? Okay. Right. Oh. Mm. And what is the truth? The truth is that it was that my it condom. That it wasn't your condom? It was it my was condom. Man's. It was your condom. Yes. So why was your condom <laughs> in Mr. Sims' car? Because he gave me a ride to my friend's house. And when I got to my friend's house, went there to go, you know, have a little party with my friend. And when I got there... How convenient. I realized that I didn't have what I came with. So... <laughs> it was... So it just turned into a Netflix night. <laughs> so we just... Ne- Netflix and chill. For real. So when he came back to pick me up... <laughs> I didn't even... I had such a good time, I didn't even realize that my pump, that the condom was in his car. I probably figured that I probably dropped it outside the car or probably just forgot it at home. And that's your story? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Williams. You may be seated. <laughs> Miss Williams... Oh, you, 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 
You're not buying any of this? Here. None of it. And you my brother. What are you doing? <laughs> you should be over here. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, that does raise a question. Why would your brother lie? <laughs> I mean, what does he have to gain Because they always if it's not together. The truth? I don't know. They probably, I don't know, messing with sisters or something. Oh, oh boy. Oh. So you just went right there. I did. As always. But don't you think, I mean, your brother and you have grown up together. What he, mean? Well, I'm just saying, he, he knows man. you're a force to reckon he with. I am. And I just would think he'd think twice about it, because you're going to be mm. his sister forever. Yeah. I would think well, that... after these results come back, I don't know. I might disown both of them. Oh, boy. Well, Mr. Cutler, I think we got enough. Let me tell you what we got. <laughs> Mr. Sims is coming home late from work. And they, he's only about 10, 15 minutes from home, and it's taking him an hour and a half, two hours. And then a condom falls out when they're cleaning the car, and he says, not mine, it's your brother's. And she doesn't believe any of it. She's like, it's yours. And well, I don't know why my brother's doing this. And for these reasons, she believes that Mr. Sims is cheating. And Mr. Sims, you deny all of this. Yes, sir, I deny it all. Well, we're about to find out. That's, no, that's right. Because this court has done a full and complete investigation. At this time, the court will call certified polygraph examiner Tommy Platt to determine, is he cheating? Tommy uh, Platt. Mr. Platt, how are you? Good, Your Honor. It's good to see you. Good to see y'all. Now, Mr. Platt, you have over 30 years of law enforcement experience and 11 years as a polygraph examiner, correct? Yes, sir. You've done thousands of polygraph examinations. Yes, sir. And you conducted a polygraph examination of Mr. Sims, correct? I did. You know what, love? This is just something I noted. When we talked to him about is he cheating and all the evidence against him, his response sounded a lot like Ms. Williams when she was standing over there. Mm. It's just very interesting that... I don't know if you noted it, but I did. And so, I, I do, too. Uh-huh. Yeah, and, mm. and, she, and... She failed her test. <laughs> At least just one. one. Was, just yeah, one. just one. But just, just one, one, but she did fail. All right, and you right. saying that's not gonna happen to no, you? No, it's not gonna happen to yeah, me. All right. Same thing. All right. You asked Mr. Sims, does the underwear your girlfriend found belong to another woman with whom you had sexual intercourse? What was his response to that question? He stated no. What did the polygraph determine? The polygraph determined that he was being truthful. You asked Mr. Sams, have you had sexual intercourse with any woman other than Miss Williams since returning from this court? What was his response? He stated no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was telling the truth. Well, we have one more question. You also asked Mr. Sims, have you had physical sexual contact with any woman other than Ms. Williams since returning home from this court? What was his response? He stated yes, he confessed. Well, did he give an explanation with that? Um, Your Honor, he stated that he went to a strip club a few weeks ago and he paid for four lap dances grabbed some boobs, butts, and the strippers grinded on his man section. <laughs> and so that was what the sexual contact was you were referring to? lie about it, Your Honor. I went to the strip club. All right, Ms. Williams, he has admitted to contact with a stripper or more. So what are you thinking right now? No, this might be the end for us. There's no reason to go to a strip club and get four. Would, would it have been better if he got one? It wouldn't have been better if he got none. He shouldn't have been there. Let me strip for you. Give me them dollars. You know, some people don't consider going to a strip club being unfaithful. Oh, I do. You consider you that got unfaithful? Other breasts in your face. You got, you know, private areas riding your manhood. That's cheating. In your mind, that's cheating. Yeah, absolutely. That's that same test I feel, right? Physical contact. But same one. In my mind, 
there is a vast difference between an ongoing relationship with a particular woman as opposed to that's what strip clubs are about. Now, that's a conversation that, you know, I think couples should have. What do I consider to be cheating? Now, I am not hardly trying to tell you to keep him or take him home with you, but I do think it's a huge difference between going to a strip club and hooking up with a coworker, somebody he gonna see every day. And the thing is, he admitted to it. He didn't deny it. Yeah. Well, he should have took me too. Well, that's a con that's a grown folks conversation I don't want to be a part of. But I know couples who go to uh, strip clubs together. I'm just I'm just putting it out there for you to think about that. Now, you each have been at that podium. You were at the podium last time. She's at the podium this time. Each of you has been the one that's been accused. You've each had your turn now. Enough. We don't want to see you back in this court again <laughs> as litigants. <laughs> you all have been together for four years, married for three, yes. and you have two daughters together. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Braxton, why have you brought your wife to court today? I'm here to see if my wife cheated with her ex-boyfriend. Oh. That's why I'm here today. My family means a lot to me, and uh, got a cloud hanging over our family right now, and I just want to get past it. And I'm a man that stands on principles, so I don't want to be a statistic as far as a divorcee, and I got daughters, so I want them to see a solid man. Okay. <laughs> Braxton, what are you here to prove? I'm here to prove that I've been faithful to my husband. Um, I know that some actions that I might have taken might have been wrong, but as far as any infidelity or anything like that, I've only been with my husband. And I want to let him know so that we can get the trust back and move forward and just take care of our family and be happy. So, what is the current status of your relationship? Are you all together? What does it look like in your uh, home? It's definitely gotten rocky because, you know, we're real solid family. We have, you know, schedules and different things like that. Now it's more like one foot in, one foot out. I got stuff in the car, trunk, brother's house, couch, wherever. And I just, that's not what I got married for. I want my husband home. I want him to sleep with me and not downstairs. Um, that's, that's why we're married, is to be together. <clears throat> All right, so, Mr. Braxton, you essentially have got one foot already out the door, and it's all because you believe she's cheating. In, in so many words, Your Honor, yes. All right, so if it turns out that she is cheating, you're gone. The consequences is gonna be devastating. And you understand what is at risk? Yes, if my husband was to leave me, I would have to learn what it's like to become a single mother. That's something I know nothing of. Um, our family would be devastated financially. I do work part-time, but he's the primary breadwinner in our home, and I can't afford to lose him. So the stakes are high? Very high. Really, we're at home together, but we're not dealing with each other. It feels like we're going through the motions sometimes. You know, Where are you sleeping? Usually, uh... <laughs> Sometimes on the couch, sometimes at my brother's crib. I mean, I ain't gonna... She doesn't even know this, but I've slept in the car before, just because... Okay, so you want him back in your bed? Yes, I do. Moreover, right. she wants her husband. She don't want yes. a roommate, she wants her husband. Yes, Your Honor. And you want your wife? Of course, yes. So what I'm hearing from both of you, you want it to be like it was in the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Tell me what that was like. Um, very in love, um, very attracted to one another. He's very caring and attentive. When he and I met, we met at Mutual Friends, and, and when I saw him, I was very attracted to him, and I noticed him looking at me, and we just kind of locked eyes for a minute. It was just like everything froze. I felt like I was on the hunt, and I, you know, <laughs> I, had to, I had to get it, you know what I mean? I can't explain it, it's like... <laughs> you it's saw like what you lion wanted, and you... seeing a deer, you know what I mean? I just had, I, I wanted it. <laughs> You know what I mean? I, I want right. her. I know what I wanted for my life. So. He pays attention to everything. Wants to know if I've ate, you know, wants to know how I'm doing. He's very intellectual, and that really turned me on and was the best thing about him. Is what's going on up here the sexy? Absolutely. I got you. Right, but don't get it wrong now. <laughs> I put it down to make sure oh, I keep my own. Oh, my okay. goodness. <laughs> It's more than just words, but that's what that's separated true. her from the rest. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> Conversation's great. You know, being a gentleman is great. Being attentive is great. 
But there's but another the component. The yeah, there's another and, component to it also. And you can't lose that component. You're right. That has to be there. And so that's why, I, I mean, that's part of the reason why <laughs> I want to make sure we stay together um, because we just complement each other very well. And we're life partners and he's my teammate and I just want to make sure we're in good standing. Aww. All right. Well, so where did it go wrong? Yeah. You know, we got in a fight a while back and... um. It was really, really bad. You know, it's probably the worst fight we've ever had as a couple. You know, uh, was some issue over the kids, basically. You know, and she wanted to uh, go somewhere, and I wasn't feeling. I was trying to keep my kids together. I have one other child. Well, Your Honor, the thing is that um, I wanted to take my daughter with me, and I was pregnant at the time. And when he didn't want me to take her with me, and he had her, and he left the house, and I wasn't able to find them, and you know, I just felt like. My motherhood was being attacked. I felt like, why aren't you giving me our baby? That's when it blew up. Well, to I mean... the point, Your Honor, where when I left to go to the party for my family member to go away to the military, um, I stayed um, at my grandmother's house for a week. It was so much of a blow up that I didn't think we were going to even reconcile. I thought that it was going to be over. So this is a big argument you all had. Yes, Your Honor. During the argument, things were so heated and everything like that that I ended up mouthing off to authorities because of anger and ended up in handcuffs. And that's not even... That's not her. So I can... I, I won't let her just go out like that. That's not her. She ain't... She ain't like that, but I knew it was because she was pregnant. Just to be 100, she was acting differently than she normally does. So in your mind, this was not a relationship-ending argument? No. And ultimately, you got through it and you got back together? Right. And I'm thinking we on up and up, like, okay, that's behind us. But something just keep tugging at me. I'm like, man, you was gone. You in your hometown. I'm not there. You was angry at me. You got something you need to tell me. Like, now's the time. We're not mad at each other. We're not going to run out of here. We're not going to do nothing. Right, that. right, right. So she, she confided in me and told me that she, uh, through social media, uh, hit her ex up through Facebook, got a phone number, called him, says he brought her an apple pie or something like that. And they chilled. She was pregnant, so that ain't too far. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, <laughs> and she says they just kicked it in, in his vehicle oh. at her grandmother's house. And I'm like, what? I um, sent a message to him because of the argument, and I asked him for his number and told him that I just wanted to talk. And he came and brought me what my craving, my apple pie at the time, and we just talked. This was during the time you all had the big argument? Yes, Your Honor. And you're okay. at your grandmother? The time yes, that you Your believed Honor. your marriage was basically over? Yes. And you hit up your ex on Facebook, and you went to him to confide in him, to talk to him? Yes, that is true, Your Honor. Were you talking to him about your marriage? I was talking to him about the things that we were going through. Yes, I was. Um, so I feel like, do I not have her heart? You know what I mean? Then I, I mean, Your Honor, I feel like I put it down in every aspect. You know, that makes me feel like, okay, am I inadequate in some way or something? Like, what's going on here? You know what I mean? I seen the cat. And I'm uh, like, it's, for real? Uh, okay, okay you know so I mean? wait, like, wait, <laughs> hold on, hold on. How long after this did you find out that this interaction took place? Like maybe five months afterwards, or four months, or so. I'm not. I'm not sure, but it was a while ago. So that's what I'm saying. It was like revisioning, like I, like everything flashed forward. Because when she initially told me and confessed it, I, I swallowed it. I kept my cool because, Your Honor, I want my wife to be able to come to me even when she mess up. Just come and let's see if we can get past it. Give me that opportunity, that choice to see if I want to stay or not. But don't have me living no lie. Why would you wait five months to tell him? Your that? Honor, I was afraid of the way that he would react in losing my family. I was afraid that he would leave me right then. See, when I done this, yes, it was wrong, but I was acting out of anger. I was upset. And just to be honest with you, Your Honors, it's just... I've been with him and been faithful, and I felt attacked with my character and all kind of things. And I just felt if I talked to somebody else, maybe I can feel like I still had it. You know, I, I mean, just to be honest, I know that sounds crazy, but that's the reason why I've done it. Wow. So, have you been in communication with your ex since? No, Your Honor. Not in any way, shape, or form. Were you visiting with him? because you wanted to bounce off of him? Or was he your backup plan? I just, like you said, as you put it, wanted to bounce off of him. Okay. Do you believe that, Mr. Braxton? I don't know what to believe. That's what the whole problem is. Like, I want to. 
Interaction talking in the car sound way better than sex. You know what I'm saying? And you think there was sex? I think it's a possibility. And I'm wondering, like, uh, you know, what other avenues of communications is being done or dealt with? Look where my mind was at and her mind was at in the same argument. I'm at home not even thinking about, like, I didn't have no, like... I, I mean, I but during the home? argument, like, things during the argument, you talk real strong. You yeah. say real, a whole lot of stuff That's that true. maybe you might not mean. And you hurt me when you were saying all of those things. You made me feel disrespected. And I didn't appreciate it. I felt like, well, why am I going through this if he thinks all of these things about me? Like, I, I'm still a woman. I think I still look good. I think I still have qualities that other people would want. I have things to offer, I still got it, and I wanted to feel that. And so, you waited six months, five or six months to tell him that. All this time, for a year, it's been spinning in his head. What else isn't she telling me? If you had come home, you tell me if I'm wrong, Mr. Braxton, if she had come home and said, look, I was angry, I was so angry, I reached out to another man to find (laughs) out, am I wrong? You wouldn't have liked it, but you would have felt differently because she came straight to you with the truth. Exactly. That would have showed that loyalty that I wanted next to me and I could have just wrapped that up and moved on because I wasn't going to beat her over the head with it. Well, here's the deal. We have invited a friend of the court to come and talk to us about what it's like to deal with a partner or spouse when there are questions of infidelity. We would like to invite Trina Braxton to come and share with us. Ron, would you escort her into the court? Yes, Sean. Hello, Your Honors. Hello. Hi, how, how are, are you? you? Great. It is good to see you. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> There's no relation. <laughs> yeah, I was, I, we were going to clarify yeah, that. We'll clarify. <laughs> we don't know that. So good to see you. Thank you <laughs> for taking time out of your busy schedule from your TV show. Thank you. I'm so glad you're here because we need for you to help and share some things with them from your perspective. Okay. Uh, I have some experience. <laughs> we know, uh, we this. know. I have, I have two husbands. Um, <laughs> one of the first things I'm gonna say is this. If your spouse or your significant other is doing something that you don't want them to do or if, if they're doing something that you wouldn't want done to yourself, that's cheating. Just period. It just is. Because you have to put yourself in that other position. Uh, the argument that you guys had that led up to this situation, she felt like the words that you said hurt her in such a way to where she felt like she still had to feel like she was wanted in a way. So it had absolutely nothing to do with your prowess, <laughs> but it had to do with the way you spoke with her. And you can't be so busy putting it down by be- being busy putting her down. Mm. You can't do that. It's not gonna work. But at the same time, communication is key. If you're gonna let it go, let it go. But if you're not going to, let them go because it's not worth it. Yeah. It's just not because it's gonna be a constant circle of overly rehashing again and again and again, and nothing is going to be ever resolved because you're going to keep reliving it. All right, so is there anything that you've done in a relationship that later you kind of regretted and, th- and thought, you know, maybe I shouldn't have done that? Mm, I mean, that's with everyone, but um, let me tell you one thing about regret. Regret is moot, but so is pride. Pride is an emotion a person in love cannot afford. You got to put it behind you. You really, really do. Well, Ms. Braxton, thank you so much for coming and sharing with us. This was the kind of information we wanted to hear. Yes. And I think our litigants need to hear so that they can make good choices about this this passionate love that they clearly have for Mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. It resonates. It resonates. You guys are both still in love with each other. You have to be in love or let it go. Pick one. Can't have both. This is a marriage on the line. Uh, You've accused her of cheating with an ex-boyfriend. She's denied that she had any kind of sexual contact with her ex-boyfriend. And so to get to the bottom of this, uh, the court has retained the services of a licensed private investigator, Kendall Scholl, who is a former special agent with the FBI. Ron, would you please show Mr. Scholl into the courtroom? Yes, Your Honor. How are you, Mr. Schultz? Good to see Good, you. Good, to see you. Very much, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Schultz, would you please tell the court what type of examination you performed in this case? In this particular polygraph, I use what we call a single theme polygraph examination. Even though we asked three 
different questions on the polygraph exam, all those three questions are focused on one specific area or concern. So you asked Mrs. Braxton these three questions. One, the week you left your husband, did you have sex with your ex-boyfriend? Two, since being married to your husband, have you had sexual intercourse with your ex-boyfriend? Three, the day when your ex-boyfriend brought you an apple pie, did you have sexual intercourse with him? What was her response to these questions? Mrs. Braxton's responses to all three of those questions was no. What did the polygraph determine based on her responses? Polygraph determined that there were equally significant responses to all the questions that I asked, all responding no. And in addition, there were no fluctuations in her responses at all. all right. so, so what does that tell you about her responses? Was she being truthful? She was being truthful. I'm sorry about that. All right, Mr. Braxton, how you feeling? I got a lot of making up to do. All right. Uh, Mr. Culler can give you some tips about how to make it right. <laughs> um, Mrs. Braxton, let me just say, I'm so glad that you were telling the truth. Me too. Thank you. We plan to be at your 25th wedding anniversary, so I want to invite. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Braxton, keep putting it down. <laughs> keep putting it down. 